OK, so that's what happens with uh, uh, the advection equation. So one of the things, if you see people solve equations that are hyperbolic, purely hyperbolic, like wave equations, people who track tsunamis across the world. That's, uh, I mean, if you, if you want to predict uh, where tsunamis go, it's pretty much, uh, it's a pretty much a hyperbolic equation. There is, a, uh, because the waves are so long, there is essentially not much diffusion going on in, in most of these, I mean, in a large part of the ocean. So, so if you want to solve a pure advection equation and you don't want to incur the kind of uh, marginally stable problems we have seen before, and people solve a uh, uh, gas dynamics equation with very high Reynolds numbers. That's also a, another case where there is a very few, very few diffusion. What you do is you can modify your numerical scheme to sacrifice a little bit of accuracy, but gain a little bit of stability. So that technique is called the upwinding. It's a very popular. How do you do that? Is the following. Remember, we were trying to derive the optimal discretization for du dx, right? We have said, OK, so this we want it to be a times u of i minus 1 plus b times ui plus c times ui plus 1. And let me just uh, repeat the Taylor series analysis because uh, uh, we are going to modify what we are going to use. Let's stop over here. And uh, plus b times ui plus c times ui plus uh, first order term and plus second order term. OK? So still, no matter what you do, you have to cancel the first term because otherwise you get a minus one order scheme, right? Because, I mean, so, so, okay, so we were able to cancel this term, we get a second order scheme. This is because the remaining error term happens two places after the term we want to approximate. We get a second order scheme. If we are unable to cancel this, we get a first order scheme. If we are unable to cancel this, we get a zeroth order scheme, which means our approximation is wrong. And if you don't cancel this, you get a negative one order scheme, which is wrong. OK, so we, can, we have to cancel this. We still have to get a plus b plus c equal to 0. We also have to cancel this, because we, want, we don't want a zeroth order scheme. Uh, by the way, I think there are zeroth order schemes being used, uh, which is bad. So we get uh, a minus a uh, delta x plus c delta x has to be equal to 1. Now, this term, we don't have to cancel it, right? If we, if we can live with a first order scheme. And uh, uh, we, we're going to talk about later, like we can, we can actually, there are more intelligent ways to do this. You can involve even more grid points so that we get a stable scheme, but also second order. But let's say here, if we can live with the first order scheme, how can we get a stable discretization? Stable but consistent discretization. A consistent discretization just means it's at least a first order. All right. So um, now let's don't, don't cancel this yet and figure out if we have to have a scheme that satisfies only this, is there a way to get a stable scheme. Okay, so I, I'm going to just uh, use an example here. The example here is that what if I have what if I have a exactly equal to zero? So if I have a exactly equal to zero, so let's use blue here. Then what should be my b and c to satisfy? <coughs> both constraints. So what should C be if A is equal to 0? C has to be everything that uh, works to satisfy this. So C has to be 1 over delta x. So what should B be? 
B has to add to this 0 and C to cancel out everything. So B has to be 1 over delta X. So I get a scheme that is the derivative is going to be approximated by what? Uh, it's going to be ui plus 1 minus ui divided by delta x. Right? It's one-sided difference. I'm taking the difference only on the right-hand side. So if I do that, let's see what kind of scheme do I get. I have dui dt equal to minus u times ui plus 1 minus ui divided by delta x. So how do I analyze stability of that scheme? Mr. Von Neumann, right? Uh, the, the, the method we have been using. So ui, let's just uh, represent it as uh, u to the k, which I mean you can just assume is 1. It doesn't matter much to the Von Neumann stability analysis. Times e to the j i k delta x, right? Previously, we used the 2 pi over n. Let's just use delta x in this case. So what we get is this is going to be minus u times e to the j i k delta x times e to the j k delta x. So this is basically ui plus 1 minus 1 divided by delta x, right? So this is uh, basically ui, because we are assuming this is ui, times a big U, 1 minus e to the jk delta x, delta x. So now this is my uh, lambda k. Is this one stable? Let's do it. So. Um, we have uh, uh, so this is the this is the uh, this is the complex plane. We have one minus a uh, imaginary uh, uh, one minus the exponential of a pure pure imaginary number. The exponential of a pure imaginary number lies on a unit circle. So one minus that one is going to be lying on a unit circle that is centered at at plus one, right? So here on this unit circle would be lying 1 minus e to the j k delta x. Okay, now somebody tell me, is that going to give me a stable scheme? I'm going to be dividing by delta x and multiply by u. No, never. You are right, it's not going to give me a stable scheme if u is greater than 0. But what if u is less than 0? It's stable, right? So if u is negative, this can give me a stable scheme. It can even give me a stable scheme using forward Euler. Because if this curvature of this unit circle is small enough, it's smaller than the stability region of the forward Euler, we have a stable scheme. All right, so this scheme would be a stable scheme for advection equation that advects towards the left, right? Okay, so, so we are taking a right biased derivative. It's good for waves that advect towards the left. It's called upwinding, right? Because we are taking the grid points we use towards the upwind direction. The waves are coming from the right, right? It's like the waves are driven by wind coming from the right. So the upwinding direction is the i plus 1 grid point direction. So this is the upwinding scheme and uh, uh, so, so here. So here would be lambda k if u is less than 0. On the other hand, if the wave coming from the left my discretization is going to be the opposite. So, so what if c is equal to 0? What I have to get is, if you look at the equation, you're going to figure out uh, a now has to be minus 1 over delta x, and b has to be positive 1 over delta x. And I would get 
a discretization that is ui minus ui minus 1 over delta x. That is another consistent approximation. Okay, so if you do that, what you end up with is you're going to have the factor here is going to be 1 minus e to the minus jk delta x divided by delta x, right? Because the effect of i minus 1, we get a minus sign here. So here, uh, what we have, oh, there is a, yeah, there is a minus sign, there is a minus u here. So coming over here, it'll be u times e to the minus j k delta x minus 1 divided by delta x. So this is lying on the negative real part. I mean, it's going to be lie on the left-hand side of the imaginary axis if u is greater than 0. So the green scheme, the left biased scheme is good for a vector equation with u greater than 0. Again, it's looking towards the upwind direction. All right. So, so this is a technique used to gain stability by sacrificing accuracy because here you won't be able to cancel this term. Therefore, you end up getting a first order scheme. Well, these are not the only two types of upwinding scheme. For example, you can mix a central difference with one of these upwinding schemes, right? You can derive a scheme that is equal to 0.9 times the central difference scheme plus 0.1 times one of these upwinding schemes. You still get a scheme that has stability property. It's first order. But the first order error is going to be only 10% of the first order error you're going to get in one of these schemes. right? So, so there is a lot of uh, uh, balance and uh, trade-off you can make to have a stable scheme and uh, get as much accuracy as possible. All right, so, so this is uh, what we discussed this lecture. Uh, volume stability analysis, we apply to heat equation, and then we went through all the three questions of how to do finite difference approximation, how to do error analysis, and stability analysis using, using the volume method for the linear advection equation. So next lecture, we'll briefly talk about uh, elliptic equation and then go to finite volume.